Girl, you look cute. Thank you. What's in that cup? Girl. That's what I want to know. Shh. This is a secret. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Did you want to take a shot? <laughs> oh, it's tequila? Yeah. It's, it's I was going to tell you to take a shot, but you good. Oh, yeah. All right. So, we are going to get... Uh, hold on, let's turn this over my head. <laughs> <laughs> my head is like, woo. Girl, oh, okay, okay, look. So who is our guest for today? Like, what's We're about going to be on? talking about our fitness. So our who, fitness, from what, baby, I need to from get. From what I said, who do you think? Fitness. I already know who it is. It's Nard. Exactly. Let's, let's be for real. The king of fitness. Of fitness <laughs> in Baton Rouge. For real, for Nard. real. Like, so we gonna have him today. We gonna figure out. I'm excited because I need to know how to get a booty. You told, <laughs> Come you on. told me you was like what dieting or something. I like am. Fasting. I'm intermittent fasting right now because you know I had my baby a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> now a year ago, but, but yeah. But you don't look like it though. You look good. Thank you, girl. But now I'm trying to tone up, and I really want to get my booty because I feel like my baby stole my booty for real. Oh no. I don't know what happened, but he just. I feel like they, I thought they gave you booty. Maybe not. Not the boys. I heard it was the girls that gave you the booty. I had a boy, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't want a boy then. So maybe Nari can give me some tips on how to get Build booty. that booty. I want to know. Ask it for myself. Look, asking <laughs> for myself for real. All right. So let's get it then. Let's get it. Look, Louisiana Dagger Factory. You can follow me at LA underscore Dagger Factory. And look, this is how we rolling with it. I'm making daiquiris with premium alcohol. You see this? Here? That's what I'm making my daiquiris with. This is apple cognac. We make this with V-Long. Yo, this shit fire. We make a tropical passion with this new Syrah. We got a um, green apple. That's his favorite. It's my favorite, y'all. Peach Douce. Strawberry Hennessy, plenty of different flavors. Just follow me at Louisiana Daiquiri Factory. So, you can call me, DM me, or text me, and I'm pulling up. Certified. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I got a drink. Down. Hey. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? How you doing? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? How are you? I'm excited. Okay. I'm excited good. too. I have a lot of questions for yes. you. Today. We gonna help the girls out today. For real. With the fitness. Cause you are witness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <Stop>. jokes. <laughs> okay, so I have to know what got you into fitness? Like you're the fitness king of BR Literally. for real. So what got you there? So uh, pretty much with my whole journey with me coming to Baton Rouge in general is for school. So I came to Southern University. I was in a band at Southern University. Um, I played snare drum. Um, after I got the band, I picked up the hobby of boxing, and boxing is what put, took me down this whole path of pretty much fitness. So I, was, I fell in love with the workout aspect of, you know, boxing. Um, but I was in school for computer science and public relations. Wow. See, That's has, like a big thing. That is a big <laughs> How you go from computer science to <laughs> fitness, fitness gym owner. Right, so it was like... I was in school for computer science, public relations. My last semester, I had, what, 12 credits left. I ended up dropping out um, because I just wasn't happy. I wasn't. That's crazy. It, it just didn't sit but, right with me. Like, I love the atmosphere and the environment of school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I hated, like, the set schedule of me having to do something and being judged by, you know, okay, you're going to get this according to this grade you get Yeah. Uh, by you doing this, right? But... Mm -hmm for things that didn't add up to me as important, yeah. right? Like, if I fell a biology test, <laughs> I, yeah. can't, I can't continue to, you know, move yeah. forward in my life because yeah. I don't uh, know the parts of a cell or something, you know what I'm saying? But That's interesting. Um, I love the environment, and the environment, more than anything, helped mold me and grow mm -hmm. me until into something that I wasn't, right? Yeah. Because yeah. coming from a small country town, which is... Where Apolo are you from? Opelousas. Yeah. Opelousas, Louisiana. It's different, and the mindset is different. So with me coming and being exposed to that social environment that school mm -hmm. provided, mm -hmm. it exposed me to more than what my small town had to offer, right? Yeah. So I was able to develop into someone that I wasn't, and... 
pursue the path that I didn't plan on pursuing, but yeah. just, you know. It just opened it felt, your eyes to a whole right. yeah. different world, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that is so cool and awesome because it's like a lot of people will stay in school knowing that this is not, not what they them. want, this is not what they want to do. I mean, right. I was in school, I graduated with my bachelor's in mass communications, but like I still liked it, but still somewhat, like I'm like, I'm already doing what I like to do, so what's the point? But I know a lot of people that literally stuck it out through school and like half Hated of my friends it. are like, what do I do now? I hate this. Like, I hate this. I, I will not... say that, though. I, what you said, like, it molded you into the person mm-hmm. you are. I do think college is a good, like, personal development oh, experience. Oh, yeah. Like, a speaking experience. It's a, yeah. yeah, it's a good place where, yeah, think about it. If you stay around just your hometown people mm-hmm. all the time, like, all of y'all have common ground where y'all all know the same thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, was that a plan? No, yeah. <laughs> so where, you, where y'all all know the same thing. But yeah. once you start getting into the melting pot of what school is, like you have people from different cultures, different uh, backgrounds, that you like, dang, like their life is really different from mine. Yeah. Their perspective is different. So yeah. now you're able to, you know, pick and choose what you're going to acquire in your life. Um, I mean, apply it to your life. And, you know, just kind of, Find yourself and mold yourself into the person you want to be. Yeah. So, so yeah. I want to ask you, so you're an entrepreneur, business owner. Do you think college is necessary for what you're doing? Um, no, I don't. Um, like I said, the social experience and the environment definitely played a big part. Yeah. Even to me getting to the mindset that I am. Mm. Um, but as when it comes down to like, having that piece of paper or a degree, no, yeah. not at all, because, <laughs> no, <laughs> just not at all in my book, for real. Yeah. yeah. So how did you start building your clientele? So I was still in school. Um, like I said, I was in the band. So mm-hmm. once I got out of the band, I picked up boxing and started working out. And the type of person I am, I get bored fast, so mm-hmm. with my workouts, I had to keep them creative to keep me, you know, yeah. interested in myself, yeah. keep me motivated. So by me being creative with my workouts, I was just recording, and it's just like when Instagram was first coming around, catching on. Mm-hmm. I was recording and um, posting it, and then people would see the stuff I'd be doing, and just became interested in it. And then I would show up to the gym like literally every day, uh, the rec center at Southern. Where people always see me, and then yeah. all of a sudden, they're like, hey, can I work out with you? Like, I'm like, I guess. Yeah. Because I'm in here regardless. Yeah. So you might as well, you could tag along. Cool. Yeah. And I did that for the longest until. Were you charging at that time or no, with the free? No, uh, you were doing did, it just kindness of your heart. Right. It didn't even cross my mind to like start charging wow. at that time. I actually had to have a friend. Make me start charging. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, man, you tripping. Like, you can yeah. charge for this. Yeah. I'm like, uh, okay. Is that where, like, the idea of physical training came in? I mean, fitness. Still, I would, I would say, still at that time, I still would just focus on doing me and mm-hmm. using it as my outlet to, like, because honestly, and I'm going to give y'all a little exclusive. I know, honestly, what, what got me. We can be exclusive. Yes. Let's <laughs> what got me as deep and. Consistent and like being consistent with uh, fitness is you gotta think about it. It's an outlet for something, right? Yeah. A lot of people move towards fitness, what it is to um, blow off some steam, what it is to just escape the real world real quick, right? Yeah. Or uh, just to try to you know, just to try to clear the head. So it's all about having that clarity and that energy. So. Fitness gave me energy, and what it did, what it did mostly, was gave me clarity. Like I said, I was in school. I was in school that last semester. I wasn't happy though. So mm-hmm. my outlet for me not being happy at that time was working, working out. out, right? So I would work out to just get away from the pressures of honestly school, mm-hmm. because it's like man, like I'm in I'm in school for computer science, and I know this. Not, not what I want to do. I don't yeah. want to sit behind a desk and be in a cubicle. Somebody telling me what to do, how to do it. Yeah. Um, and this is what pretty much I'm agreeing to do for four years to go to school and learn about to do for the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, it didn't sit right with me. Yeah. So, so that was your escape. Yeah, my escape from just the reality of 
you're supposed to be doing this, this is what's right. Yeah. But it didn't feel right to me. Like, it's just like my escape was working out. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you go from just voluntarily training people? How did, what made you turn it into an actual career in business? Okay, so like I said, one of my friends um, talked to me and said pretty much charging people $10. $10? Yeah. Ooh, we was okay. cheering. Right, right, right. Ain't no $10 today. <laughs> uh-huh. Ain't no $10 today. Yeah. No no Your prices don't went up. Nah. For real. <laughs> Not bad price no more. But, uh, For real. <laughs> Man, we should be caught up too late. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. So for the... For ten dollars, it'll be like a forty-five minute to an hour session, and we'll be I either bring them to the rec center mm-hmm. uh, at Southern, or we'll go in the park. Mm-hmm. And then, as I started getting more people coming into the rec center, I kind of couldn't use the rec center anymore, so I started going to the park. And then, after going into the park, like with all the rain and weather conditions, you know, you never know what the weather gonna be out here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I started just getting memberships at different gyms. And still was bringing people there. I had a lot of clients, you know, going to those gyms, but ended up getting banned from Spectrum, from Planet Fitness. Because you was illegally working out as a gym. Right. Right. And Had a whole class. <laughs> <laughs> he hired himself out of For real. Like, why wouldn't you? I'd be in there all day, and they're like, man, like, this, so this not, like, this not going to work. Like, you need to come work for us and be, be a trainer or here. Or you're going to have to go. Uh, yeah. Right. We're going to have to, yeah, flag your name. That is so, so cute. At that time, I didn't understand it, but now being on a gym, like I kind of understand like why. The yeah. Yeah. And it's like, well, it's nah, we got trainers too. over here. Like, why are they gonna go train? So yeah, I get it. Um, but yeah, so that was just a, and that was actually an eye opener for me too. So with me being banned from those places, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one thing I don't take good to is being told no or what to do. So once they put that block on me, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, now, I was just trying to figure out my pivoting move, like, and it didn't, it still didn't register, okay, you should really pursue this to the point where you could open your own or do yeah. your own. Yeah. It's just like, it had my mind racing, like, okay, if they kick me out of here, what's what's yeah. my next step? How am I going to continue to go? Because it wasn't no stop for me. I wasn't mm-hmm. about to stop. Mm-hmm. So when did but, you open your first gym? My that first? That was the one on, where was it? Um, on a it was close to the Sherwood on Florida. It was on Florida. Right next to Elfham Tattoo Shop. And the way that came about was, like I said, I didn't even have any goals or anything planned when it came down to opening the gym. Yeah. Being Opening the gym and being a fitness trainer was never on my radar. It was never a goal of mine. Yeah. Right? But, like I said, I went with, I continued to go with what flow and what felt right to me. So... What felt right was everything I was doing in that moment. So I just mm-hmm. kept going, so and I was never led to a wrong direction, right? Yeah. So I was on my way out one day. We had stopped at a tattoo shop because my homeboy used to work at Elfham Tattoo Shop. All right, all right. It's your girl, Alicia Jazzy Sweets and Treats, and I got another something special for y'all. I'm here with my boy, Percy Keith, and you know he on his big old... Big old, uh, you know, keep my body right shit. You know what I'm saying? So we gonna, I got some real healthy for him. So y'all keep it locked in to pressure. Tell them where to find you at first. Y'all can find me on social media, on uh, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Just look it up, just Google it. At Percy Keith. Yeah, 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 Percy to the next episode of I Got, got drink. drink, where we are featuring Noon. Make sure you follow the host, XOXO underscore E-R-S, Shirley. I-G-O-T-T-R-A-K-Z. <laughs> and let's make sure you follow me at E-U-S-V-U-G. <laughs> and we're going to be featuring some really great alcohol. We have white chocolate raspberry. Birthday cake. Some. Birthday cake whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> and we got that tree roll vodka right here. Straight out of Baton Rouge. So make sure you tune in for this next episode of I Got Drink. Thank you. <laughs> so when did you open your first gym? So actually, I was on my way out, and me and my friend stopped by Elfham Tattoo Shop. Okay. So 
That's one on of, Florida, right? Yeah, for on all Florida. Our yeah, on Florida. So, with an old effing tattoo shop on Florida. I'm going to get to that, though. So, one of my other friends is working as a tattoo artist. We just stop, you know, mess around before we go out. Mm -hmm. um, and the friend that I went there with was just like, he looked at the building next door and was like, hey, man, it's a vacant building. They got a number on it. Like, you could check that out since you always complain about the weather uh, when it, you train the clients. Yeah. They say, man, you can check that out, man. Go ahead and get that. And I was just like, <laughs> like in the back of my head, I'm like, well, I'm broke here. I can't, <laughs> I can't afford that. Was this um, while you were in college? Or yeah. Or was, you had... No, I was still in school. Okay, you were still in school. Uh, so, right, like, right after he said that, I was like, okay, like, just still clowning about it. I just walked up to the uh, window and write the number down, and then I put the number in my pocket. And what happened was when I woke up the next day, and like I was going through my pockets and I found their number. I just looked at it and I'm like, let me just call and see what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So when I called them, they was talking in a way that I could make work, right? Mm -hmm. Say for example, like in most cases, if you go try to get any type of commercial building or any type of spot in general, they're going to ask you to show proof of income mm -hmm. and at least that you're making three times as much as what it is for you to either so lease yeah. it or rent it, right? Yeah. Well, she ain't asked for none of that. I mean, the place... <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, the place was ran down. Like, it was a dump. Like, yeah. I mean, I can't... So she was trying I'm to get I'm not it exaggerating. I mean, I mean, a dump where the last time they had someone in that place was like five years before I even inquired about it, right? Mm -hmm. And the person she said they had in there before that, there was like raising goats or something inside of there. Like, that's why he had that's goats. Raising like, what? Like, yeah, it was some type of like plant type. I don't know. He was raising that's goats. That's so random. <laughs> I would but. actually want to go there though. I like goats. <laughs> goats are cute. Okay. But uh, the walls was ran down. I mean, it was, the roof was busted up. The flooring was horrible. Damn. Um, and, but, after she agrees to give me the walkthrough and she didn't ask for any of those things, she was just like, okay, yeah, it'll be. I guess she this couldn't ask for nothing because right. for real, they, they, they were just, to you. <laughs> they were just trying to get it, get it pretty Off much their hands. the space yeah. filled. So she was like, yeah, we'll take $800, you know what I'm saying? For That's really a month. not bad at all, right. yo. It, it's not bad, but. At that time, me being in college, yeah, I, I, did that was, not, yeah. I did not have $800 in my name. But the fact that I knew like all of what she was supposed to ask, yeah. and then the number she threw out there and gave me, I was like, by any means, I can make that happen. Yeah, like, exactly. You didn't ask for, you asked for $800, I could make that happen. Like, um, it was like it was meant to be. Like yeah. everything yeah. Like, worked out for you, it, you know? It did. So you had to just do it. And it also with the place being ran down, my background from like just... All of what I learned from my dad, like country being from the boy. country. Um, I'm looking at the spot and I'm I'm seeing how messed up it is, but not just seeing how messed up it is, but what work I would have to put into it mm -hmm. to get it to where I needed to go. And I actually say eight hundred dollars, I didn't think of, oh, I'm gonna need to hire contractors or developers and stuff for this. Nah, it's just straight in my I'm head, like to, yeah. I, just get the building. I did everything like hand by hand, like me, my dad couple friends along like mm -hmm. everybody pitched in when they was able to but I was focused on the $800 right mm -hmm. so made the $800 happen but I didn't think about everything else that came with it like you gotta get these permits and stuff clear before you even start like yeah. get the electricity turned on and stuff um I didn't even think about what the cost was gonna come close to being um for flooring yeah uh, sheetrock and it's expensive man Look, I just know, know I opened a can of worms that look, you think you anybody agree? else would have looked like, oh no. Like, <laughs> believe you me, like it's just like I was still charging that ten dollars per session. I was training between the levy and PJ's coffee going back and forth. But every dollar I made was going straight to Lowe's and me buying either a pack of flooring at a time. Like yeah. I would go get a pack at a time. And Lay it down as I go, wow. like, literally with no lights. I was running a stitching car from next door that's to crazy. have lights and wow. fans like running the whole time. So that's how you saved for the building was training your ten dollar clients at that time. Like what? Yeah. What? It, what it was did you never do no to... save. Everything was coming, no, coming in, going straight. But like, how you came up with the eight hundred dollars? Oh man, that's... every by 
Like, what were you doing? Enemy. So I was training. I was also working at Chili's. Okay. So, okay. I, like I said, every dollar I was bringing in was, was going, going straight back up. And believe it or not, what most people don't see about this is is that even though like I was in the process of you know building that studio, man, me developing and building that studio, I didn't. You you're not gonna see a profit like. Yeah. It took me seven months after getting a studio from the lady to get the lights turned on. Wow. You feel me? And then even after that, I'm still trying to catch up, make ends meet. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. there's so many there's so many things I haven't thought about because I didn't come around. I mean, come up with a business background. Yeah, have exactly. Family to go to and ask. Like I was literally like feeling around in the dark trying to figure it out for myself, trial mm -hmm. and error. Mm -hmm. Hey, maybe this is gonna work. Maybe it's not. But I was gonna try as many things that was gonna work and wasn't gonna work and figure out that way, right? Yeah. yeah. So I was gonna run out of things to try mm -hmm. <laughs> until something sticks. Was there ever a point that you got discouraged that you yeah, felt like you couldn't like, do it? <laughs> well, F this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I would honestly say, I, I say no. No. I, I you got say, a real like hard working, like I mean, work ethic. Mm. Work ethic, yes. And then like a hustler's mentality for real, because most people would literally be like, oh. Hell no. That's <laughs> All right, y'all got this building back. Bye. I'll see y'all later. Yeah. I, I get that credit of mindset uh, definitely to my dad. You know, like, just being from the country, like, yeah, it's never a time. Like, I wasn't able to just sit in the house, watch TV, and play PlayStation. Because if he outside, I had to be outside. You know what I'm yeah. saying? In the country. You know what I'm saying? Like, he had everything cows, pigs, horses, chickens, like, Real life stuff to take care yeah. of. Had to go slap the hogs in the morning, meaning go feed them. You know what I'm <laughs> what? saying? Before you get on the bus, it's wild. Like it's early morning. Like yeah, um, it's it's just a lot of that work ethic. Like I didn't see it growing up. I used to be mad about it. Like man, like right. why I'm always I used to be mad yeah, about. It. I used to be mad at him for making me work so hard, right? Yeah. But now, like it's like I you got the utmost it. respect. Yes. Like I'm so glad I ain't come up any other way because now. With me coming from the country to the city, meaning Baton Rouge, I was looking at Baton Rouge as like it was a whole new world. Yeah. When I seen the interstates crossing each other over there by Southern, I thought oh that was amazing. God. <laughs> I made it. Stop. Didn't hey, know they Kansas City hey, for. Real life. When I seen oh the interstates God. crossing, because we don't have interstates. Yeah. When I seen the interstates crossing, I'm like, man, that's that's wow. wild. He was in New York. How they made that happen? Like, now when you went to Miami, what was the... <laughs> that? That impressed me. Like, <laughs> I already right. know you. Uh, so I wonder when he thought he got to Miami. Uh, yeah. It was definitely and just seeing most, honestly, just seeing the work ethic of like people that grew up in the city. Yeah. It's way yeah. different from people that grew up from where I'm from. Oh, yeah. Like, pretty much like. Oh, yeah. Like, man. Everything ain't, comes ain't no, easy. Ain't mm -hmm. nobody out here. I, I, I would not be out of work. Like, it just can't. That's what I will say. Really? I think you were the most, like, no one could outwork you. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't think. Literally like, from what I'm hearing, especially right now, like, for real, you did that. You literally did that. You do it all. Like, your marketing, your graphics, your videos. Yeah, do everything. That's uh, insane. Like, Nard is never not working on something. <laughs> I, I noticed that, and yeah. that's awesome. YouTube that University, man. That Anything is. you need to know, it's on YouTube. Very that's true. true. Very true. Mm. podcast is coming soon common ground on the antidote network so if you want to be on the show and you feel like you popping reach out to eric at the antidote.com and we will see about you getting on the show get it it's your boy mike host shout out to the antidote hey man check out my new jersey bro just dropped these the other day good authentic feel bro just like the old vintage nba jersey you know what i'm talking about everything stitched from the tags to the letters on the jersey bro the detail i got the white i got the baby blue i thought i had the white one on i'm drunk i got the baby blue on and shit like that you know what i'm mean? saying i got my new design right here my baseball jersey t-shirt that's coming you know what I'm, I'm turning this to a hoodie also and i got my belts ain't nobody doing belts like this bro like that. good quality belts, bro. and it long and put a thing out like that Quality. Okay. Quality. Yeah, I feel so good. Mm -hmm. It's thick. No, this shit's so dope. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna hold your pants up for all y'all niggas that wanna say yeah. and shit. Make sure I go check out forevolts.com. 
Oh yeah, foreverhustle.com is the website. Check them out. We got a store in Jackson. Yeah, right? North, yeah North Park Mall. Come see you. North Park Mall. Oh, yeah, good quality, man. Right? Yeah. So, I have to ask, I see all the ladies on your page, you know, getting their bodies right, but I have never seen any men. So, my question is, do you train men or like, what is, are you biased? <laughs> What's going on? What's up? So, yeah, definitely do train men. Okay. Just that 90, I would say at least 96% of my clientele are all women. Okay. Um, and what that comes down to is like, you do have men that want to get trained, right? Um, and they will get trained, but not not as long mm -hmm. as uh, of how women will get trained. Okay. So it wouldn't be the same duration. Um, women are more willing to train because you know they, they don't have a problem with asking. But yeah. sometimes men run into ego issues. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, but yeah, definitely do train men. It's just that women are the go-to when it comes that to them sense. more willing to seek that help to get their body ready. Yeah. Is there like a difference in how you train the men versus the women? Yeah. Uh, like, what is your difference. approach? How would your approach differ? Um, oh, that's it. So men, they'll train more, more so like in the likes of the type of workouts that I would do. Uh -huh. um, but when it comes to women, it's kind of a different approach when it comes to women because of the fact of, say for example, I could tell a man how to do something mm -hmm. and what to do different than how I could tell a woman to do it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and also with men, it's 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 um I say with men you could be you could be a little more you know a little more harder, a little more harsh yeah. with how you speak to them. Yeah. But with women, you kind of have to. The approach the approach I take with women is very. Like, they, they come into it thinking I'm going to be a drill sergeant or something like that. Right? Yeah. I don't take the drill sergeant approach. I'm not going to be all up in your face. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, no. I'm very laid back. I'm like, I take the, the coaching approach. Like, you got a coach. He have a team. He makes sure the team get, know, you know, what it is they need to do. And then the team get the job done. They win the game. Yeah. Um, so I take the coaching approach. I'm very laid back. Um not gonna be a drill sergeant ish. It's just want them to be comfortable. So it's something that they're already uncomfortable with will get started. Because they're yeah. having so many questions in their head about, okay, um, should I be doing this? Is this gonna work for me? Um, am I doing everything exactly right? Mm -hmm. uh, and if they feel as though they're not doing exactly right, that could be a discouragement for women too also. Yeah, because they'll be I like, I feel as though I'm not doing it right, so I'm just not gonna do it at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's just to make them be laid back enough, my approach is be laid back enough to allow these women to feel comfortable and just come into themselves when they're trying to find themselves, even with like working out. Because yeah. a lot of times, yeah, women that resort to working out the same as I did, right? Mm -hmm. Because they might, most women either just getting out of a relationship, they're not just getting out of a relationship for their revenge body, they, mm -hmm. They have some uh, majority. They do want just that, you know, the, the healthier lifestyle. Yeah. And then you have some that's getting ready for either event, wedding, birthday, something like that. Like everybody have a that why yeah. they of why they actually doing it. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I have a, a juicy question. So I mean, obviously you work with a lot of women right. all the time. That's who you're surrounded by. Um, what do you think about mixing business with pleasure? Have you ever you know, so, dabbled in that. Dabbled with a client. So I would say early on was, I had to learn that lesson like very early. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So very early on in me even maneuvering myself towards even building a business, uh, of course, because I wasn't even like, it wasn't in my head, right? Right. So mm -hmm. even build it that way. But then as things started growing and things started building, what I geared towards was... I did majority of my research, psychology, and marketing, mm -hmm. right? So what I started paying attention to around me is, okay, at the time when I started, I was really the only one in my lane that was trying to do what, you know, what I was seeing to, uh, to possibly unfold from the path that I was taking. Mm -hmm. But as I look around and see, like, just everybody else just doing regular training, I'm like, I don't want to be that. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to end up like that, right? So, as I look around, I had to do like the, okay, 
if this worked a lot for him, mm-hmm. why it's not working for him, right? Mm-hmm. And this don't working a lot, a lot for him, why it's not working for him? So I had to eliminate what factors I seen was going like what, what like what was important the psychological side of it to where people was drawn to. Yeah. And one thing I did find, which people might find interesting, and what I found interesting is that at the time, with me being whether they were single or appearing to be single, made it easier to have a female clientele. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that you got to think about it. What comes with trainers in that space when it comes down to relationships and people that they have in the background, right? is their clients feeling uncomfortable if their person comes to the gym at that time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And their person's in there now, that person in there just might be, might think that that female that you're training at that time is interested in you. So where she's gonna put off the energy to where that client now is like, oh no, I ain't got time for that, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. it could not be that. Yeah. It could be that, but then it could not be that. But at the same time, your person mm-hmm. that you're with could make that you are with can make that person feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's an easy way to taint an entire tank, right? Yeah. You drop a drop of dye in some water, it, it'll turn it that whole, Yeah. It'll spoil it. So what I, know, what I noticed, what I found very interesting is that it wasn't a lot of trainers that was making it and being as successful as I seen the potential of what they could be. Mm-hmm. Maybe because, and honestly, some people might say no, but I'm just going off of what I see work mm-hmm. over and over again. Those that are married don't make it as far to the potential, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. of what they could possibly be. Mm-hmm. Those that have active and public relationships don't make it as far Very true. as they're supposed to be because yeah. it's a lot of factors that plays into it and get in the way. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah. Like it's a lot of facts, I promise. You. But that comes it's, into play with like people with ulterior motives or why they want to come train with you too. No, I wouldn't say that. You don't think it's so? It's just it's all about a comfortable environment. Say for example, mm-hmm. I like I train majority of females, mm-hmm. and starting off, how I build all these like friendships and relationships, and also like just kept and held on to my clientele, it, I'm yeah. able to go out with them, move around with them. So yeah, we developed more of a culture other than just, oh, the gym. It became yeah. more of a social atmosphere. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Comfortability. Yeah. If you yeah, come into my gym, you're going to leave with all new friends. Yeah, I worked, out, like, I worked out with you for a few years, you, and like we literally would hang out outside of the gym. My, whole family, yeah, it felt like. Tell you. Yeah. You would leave with all new friends. Like it's a bunch of women that come together. They would never talk mm-hmm. in real life. Yeah. That once they come into the gym, they now have a whole entire social circle. Yeah. yeah. And that's with me being able to move how I want to move when I want to move. Right. Yeah. Allowed me to be comfortable in that setting. Allowed them to be comfortable in that setting. I and that. for me to really be a genuine person in that setting. And like, hey, y'all enjoy yourself. You have a good time. And I'm just able to provide a host. You mm-hmm. know, hey, this is what we're gonna do this week. This is gonna do that week. It's just, you know, it's just, it allowed me to be able to create something, well, create a culture. Yeah. Than just a thing to do. Yeah. So I feel like, have you ever, like, I feel like you low key danced around that question. I know. I <laughs> have know. Have you ever hooked up with one of your clients? I'm looking like, all right, bring it back, though. Okay. I said yes early on. Oh, okay. okay I said okay. I learned my lesson. Okay. 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 But what Very about early on. now? So. What it, what happens if you if a woman walks into the gym and, you guys and you're fall manly in love and, love and you're like, whoa, <laughs> like, oh my god, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna you train her? Well, first of all, you gotta know who you're talking to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you mean by that? Who oh, are you talking to? Excuse me. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, uh, I'm not no head over heels falling in love to the first. <laughs> oh. Let's, 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 let's play in the field. Let's, let's do the sign drop real quick. Yeah. What's your sign? I'm like Gemini. Oh, there you go. Okay, you know what? My friends are gym. They're twins though. They're girls though, but they kind of crazy. And like I say, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a just see a person fall in love. Like every, but they're exactly like that too. Anything, That's the crazy part about it. 
every anything that became even close to like a relationship, anything, I always started as a friend first. Like, yeah. I don't have no record of no one night stands on it because that's just not me as a person. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I really like to know someone. Okay. So that's off limits now. You don't like, you would say you would not oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. date yeah. a client or anything. So if a girl wants to date you, she should not go work out with you. Oh, yeah, because, oh, no, I'm not messing my money up. Yeah, right. that makes sense. That's though, tricky. Too, Can you imagine? Because at the end of the day, somebody will literally stop working out with you because you burn, yeah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You burn them. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, spicy question. Have you ever hooked up in one of your gyms? It doesn't have to be. I just no, had no. sex. If oh, I at no. one of your gyms. <laughs> uh, no. Never? No, you never broke it in? You've never no. shared a kiss, at least, no, in the gym? No, I would say this. Oh, come on. Yeah, no, look, look, listen. <laughs> okay, okay. He's Hold like, up, no. I gotta, I gotta reframe this. Okay, because right. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about recent. I'm talking about like at all like time oh, you've no. never had sex in or kiss. And I'm about to give you a whole another exclusive. Man. Okay, cool. Back. That's what we want. That's what we want. That's what we need. We when I got my first studio, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, I didn't have eight hundred dollars. Had to make that happen. Uh -huh. I just had ran into a situation of where I was staying right there by Southern University, uh, like right there in the houses over there in the corner uh, by Southern University, and it was what is it was considered what tax credit income housing like that. Mm -hmm. So it was like four rooms, and we all each had a room. So we only was paying was like I think it was just like maybe like three fifty four hundred dollars a person, mm -hmm. so we could get the entire house. Mm -hmm. But right around the time the gym, that first studio came around, I was, I was still paying, you know, rent. Mm -hmm. that, that left portion, like I said, it was on like three, between three fifty and four hundred dollars. Yeah. But even though I was sending mines in, doesn't mean that everything was getting paid. You know what I'm saying? So we got an eviction notice, right? Yeah. yeah. Because it was like, well, this much is missing from what was being uh, yeah. turned in every month, right? So I actually got evicted out of that first house. Mm -hmm. After getting evicted out of that, it kind of set me up, honestly, to take that money I was paying for rent to put toward the gym. Right. Man, I slept on the air mattress in that gym with no air, no electricity running off of it. Extension cars in the back of my gym for the longest. Wow. Really. And I did have, you know, a special person in my life at that time in the background mm -hmm. um, that I never would just go squat or just go live with someone, right? Yeah. I never. But no, occasionally I stay back and forth. But mm -hmm. now, for the most part, my home was my car and the gym. Yeah. Right? With no electricity. Yeah. Like, Dang. Yeah. Wow. People don't even see that. They just see you like uh, yeah. now having this $1.2 million gym yeah. downtown Baton Rouge. They don't even know. like. I had a membership at Anytime Fitness just to take showers. Wow. I would, I would walk in there uh, and work out clothes and we'll walk out like with jeans and a shirt to go out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And I'll go just that a shower. That's wild. So, living on my truck, sleeping on the air mattress. So it's not. So the spicy time wasn't like a. a <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah. It was like, we got to have spicy time in the gym because we got to. <laughs> I, I mean, I had a whole projector and stuff set up. So, oh, it, yeah, was, it was probably still a vibe. It was still a vibe. Light, it but, was still a vibe. But, 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 no, I was down there living in there. Man, so, yeah. Okay, so you obviously, you pretty much handle everything in regards to your business, looks like. Like, you do the graphics, videography. Yeah. Is that, like, how, how do you manage your time with doing training <laughs> and all of the background? That's Branding. Time. I don't manage time. <laughs> I just do whatever I could get done at the time I could get it done. I don't schedule or anything like that. Honestly, that's just, I think that's like a Gemini trait. Like, it it evolved to me to actually try to plan something. Mm. Um, but yeah, I do everything from a web design, app design, graphic design, um, videography, photography, uh, whatever is needed, I would get it done. Uh, but that just comes with, you know, when you have a vision for something and you want it that bad, like by any means, before I sit back and make an excuse for something not getting done, I yeah. could, I have the ability to go find out how to do it and learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. But I'm also, I would say, feel as though I'm kind of gifted to where, 
when I do go learn something, I do do it better than the average person. I go a step beyond, you know, what the average person is usually do. Yeah. Um, with that hobby or you know, with whatever they're trying to learn. You're legally right. like a genius, huh? What's your IQ? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so I took an IQ test. What it was in twenty twenty. I have it on my uh, phone, like the whole document. But yeah, I did a. I scored one sixty two. Or it's for spatter recognition. And it's more like logical thinking. Yeah. So, are you single? Am I single? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it depends on how you want to put it. So. Yeah. <laughs> depends on uh, how you want to put it. Not depends on how you put it. <laughs> because, because y'all go off of labels, right? I don't move off of labels. Single meaning, hey, do you oh, have a girlfriend? Lord, no, do you, you don't go off of labels. Do you have a girlfriend? Okay, I just said I don't move off of labels. Do you have someone that you spend that time you with think? all the time, or like yeah. a lot of time with? I, I have. There's yeah, a special, special person? Yeah, I would say that. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, wow, so you, wow, wow. jumping off of what we were saying, how you were saying how the people that you've noticed that were the most successful don't have public relationships. Right. Would you keep that, like you purposely would keep that yeah. off of social media? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I feel definitely. that. I feel because, that. Because, yeah, think about it. I mean, I think about what social media does to relationships and what labels do to relationships, right? So the moment I give you a label, right, mm-hmm. now it comes with special requirements or certain requirements to hold up to that certain standard, right? Yeah. So, it goes from me, it goes from something that we enjoy doing together, right? Meaning, we enjoy spending time together, we enjoy, because there's no requirements. There's no, hey, this is how it has to go, right? Mm-hmm. But the moment a label is there, now you have all these rules and regulations to where now it becomes a job. I don't know if I agree with that, though. It's just I- like... Because, but I feel like I know if it works for some people, yeah. it works for some people. I'm not one of them. <laughs> you don't think that takes away from like the accountability? But I understand as far as no. an image, like I, I get that because as far as like me and my image and me like dealing with being in a relationship versus when I wasn't in a relationship, like people and men, I noticed like once I got in a relationship and had a child, my following went from mostly men to like mostly females yeah and like it's just like it it just it depends and it it changes your whole dynamic and so you have to change your content and everything that you're doing so i get not putting somebody on on social media media, but at the same time i'm like yeah it is my life (laughs) what it is y'all can take it or you're not i just don't know how i feel about the no labels and it's not about not it's not having no labels. Just that, like, like I said, I'm a person that go that goes with what flows. Right. So if it feel right and we happy, you wouldn't even say the, y'all boyfriend and girlfriend. I mean, if that's our understanding, you know what I'm saying? That's our understanding. This is the thing. When something becomes a job to someone, or someone feels as though they have, to, be a job, yeah, think about though. it. Yeah, think about it. All right. So, for example, right. Mm-hmm. What's the dynamic shift between a man and a woman? And let's just take whatever situation you had. What's the shift? And it's, it's definitely an immediate shift. Mm. After you voice or y'all voice that, hey, this is what we're doing. We're now committed. Boyfriend, girlfriend. How does that shift? <laughs> and let's well, be it's like... You're not about to go do whatever you want to do. That's day. Like you're not. How did they just not stop just, right then and there? Yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying as far as that, but at the same time, it's like if we're like in a committed relationship. Like I'm not the type of person. Like I'm not a going through phone type of girl. I'm not like you go have your like do what you got to do, but at the same time, don't disrespect me. Right. So like, don't be out here like in buku girls face, buku hoes face. Mm-hmm. Like, don't be. They like, just don't disrespect me. That's it. Like, but as far as like you liking pictures on Instagram, like I know some people are like, oh no, no liking this, don't do this, don't do that. So it just I feel like it kind of depends because I was like, you better not be like flirting or talking to other women. But as far as just like you know living your life and like, you see, that's one thing I believe also. I'm a type of person I would never stop someone 
doing from doing what it is they want to do at the time they want to do it. You know why? Because you have to constantly stop someone from doing something that they want to do or they, choose to do. They're going to do it anyway. They're going to do it regardless. Yeah. So, so you, you get where that runs yeah. into each other. Now you're giving me rules, right? But the thing is, like, that's like me giving you rules. So for me to give you a rule is meaning that, okay, you're finding more inclined to go and do that anyway, right? So for me to even have in the back of my head that I expect you to do that or feel as though you will do that, that's a break of communication right there. Yeah. So that's like me trying to sell you a car with broken pieces and I'm like, oh no, after you purchase it though, it's gonna work right. So it's a burn. Welcome to Centurion Car Care, located at 11857 Florida Boulevard, where we do quality work at an affordable price. We also do paint and body, exhaust work, and any minor and major mechanic work. Best mechanic shop south of the Mississippi. So, what do you have planned for the future? Like, what's going on with Nara Fitness? Like, we need to know. So, it's, continu it's to continue to grow, and mm -hmm. continue to scale. And pretty much like bring what I've developed so far out here, like with the studio and the elite concept, to other cities. To where the studio is always going to be the smaller gyms, like more so personal training facilities built out around the city. But anytime it's a North Fit Elite, it'll always be a 24-hour gym within a, the downtown heart of whoever city is in. So you always have one elite, but I can have multiple studios around it. So you're planning That's to awesome. cross state lines? Yeah. Uh, Houston is on my radar like, uh, immediately. Yeah. Like, I love yes. Houston. Like, Houston, definitely. I think you would do well in Houston. For yeah. sure. That's so awesome, though, Like to be able to branch out from like starting from where you started to now and like seeing that for your future is like amazing. So kudos to you. Big yes. props on. Big props. <laughs> is there anything you would like to leave us with? Um, just in general, hey. Um, anything you feel as though you want to do, like if you have a purpose or if you haven't found your purpose yet, continue to search. But the thing is, don't press yourself about not being sure what your purpose is, but just follow what flows and what goes for you, what feels right uh, for you. Don't let other people's opinions, you know, uh, force you to go certain paths that you wouldn't yeah. just because you feel as though it'll be right according to how they're going to feel about the decisions you make. So just do, just work for self, do for self, and be happy with self. You know what I'm saying? Look, go to war with the world and look, be at peace with yourself. So I would say that. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you so, so much. much. This it has been a pleasure, for yeah. sure. You dropped a lot of exclusives, I yes. feel like. You, you don't really talk gym. much, but... No, for real. I'm like, I need to hear some more. We gotta yeah. have a conversation, for real. <laughs> this interview could have gone on for hours, honestly. For real. But we might have to have you back for round two. We yes. Can get some more. Cool. Well, thanks for tuning in. Oh, sorry. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. So another episode of Common, Common Ground. Common Ground. And we'll see you guys next time. See y'all later.